right, we are at the end of Unit 8. So this will be the last section that we talk about. If this is review, then that's great. If this is new, then I'm going to go ahead and teach you all of the strategies. All right, so we are going to learn about two special right triangles. All right, and so depending on what's given and what you need to find, there are some different strategies. But we're still going to use the idea of if they're all right triangles and they have the same angles, remember we can have dilations. And so there are still a ratio of sides for the similar triangles, okay? But this does not use trig, just so you're aware of that. Um, it's really a result of the Pythagorean theorem and similar triangles, not of trig. So the first one that we're going to discuss, I'll say it's kind of the easier of the two because there's less options, all right? And so it's the 45, 45, 90 right triangle. So because it's 45, 45 and the two angles are the same, that means that the two side lengths are going to be the same as well. So it might be labeled with a slash mark or with the same value. Um, if we did the Pythagorean theorem, and I could prove it to you, um, if we let, let's say we didn't know what that hypotenuse was. If we want, I'll just say it's a quick proof. If we had one side is k and the other side is k, I would have k squared plus k squared equals our hypotenuse squared. Let's say we don't know what it is. Well, that's like 1k squared plus 1k squared, which is 2k squared. And then we would want to, to get, uh, our hypotenuse alone, we are going to take the square root of both sides. And so that would cancel out when we would get hypotenuse equals, well, because these are being multiplied, I can think of that as root two times root k squared, okay? Root two doesn't break down, but root k squared is root two times k equals our hypotenuse. And so that's what we have right here. So it's not, um, you can get this mathematically if you forget to memorize these ratios. It's just quicker if you do memorize these. So I'm gonna say memorize, okay? Or you have to do the Pythagorean theorem every time. That is an option for this triangle, all right? So there are some shortcuts and they're listed right here. So if you want the hypotenuse, then that means you would be given a leg. So you take whatever the leg value is and you're gonna multiply that by root two. If you were given the hypotenuse and you wanted to find the leg, you would take the hypotenuse and divide it by root two. Simplify and you would get the leg value, okay? So I'll say if you want the hypotenuse and if you want the leg, these are what you can do as rules. All right, so let's go through some. You'll notice I do have six examples here, so I don't think it's super easy. Um, these go quick, but it's always good to watch to make sure you understand all the scenarios. All right, so let's look at example number one. So let's move this down so we can see both. I know that these are the two sides, and so if we want to find the other two missing sides, I know if that's 17, I know this is 17. And now once again, this is like k, k, k times root two. And so if we want the hypotenuse, we take whatever the leg is times root two. Now, sometimes that will simplify more, sometimes it won't. So 17, 17, 17 times root two. That doesn't simplify, all right? If you're typing this in on a quiz, you'll just wanna type in like 17 root two if you don't have a menu or something like that, all right? And I'll know. Let's look at example number two. Now notice we have the hypotenuse. So our rules say we know it's gonna be something, something, something root two, and we have that our hypotenuse is 10 root two. So you might, some of you might already see what the answer is. If not, this says if we want the leg, we're gonna take the hypotenuse and divide it by root two. So here's my hypotenuse, and we divide it by root two. Well, these are being multiplied, so I can reduce, and we just get 10. And so that means that's what the legs are. And so notice it's 10, 10, 10 root two. Okay, some of you might have seen that, and that's awesome. If not, there's still a math strategy that helps you get it. All right, let's look at example three. This is gonna be a little harder. So I know these are my two legs, 
And so if that's 9 root 2, I know this is 9 root 2. But the issue is, is we're typically used to seeing their root on the hypotenuse. It doesn't matter. So this still says whatever we have for the legs, we take hypotenuse and we're going to do whatever our leg is times root 2. So I'm going to, it keeps moving on me. We are going to take 9 root 2 because that's a leg and we're going to multiply by root 2. That's the rule. So now we need to do some cleanup. Well, root two times root two is root four, which is two, or root two times root two is actually just two. This nine still stays, and so we get nine times two is 18. And that's our hypotenuse. So it, I never have a rule that says the hypotenuse has to have a root in it. It really just mathematically depends, but it's always whatever the leg is times root two. And let's look at example number four. So if we are given our hypotenuse, once again, we're going to follow the rule, our leg equals our hypotenuse divided by root 2. So we know our hypotenuse is 9. And if we divide it by root 2, that's what we would do. But typically, if this is multiple choice, you might see that rationalized. Remember, we just need to be flexible. So I'm okay with this answer, but if they rationalize it, we're going to multiply by root 2 and root 2. And so we get 9 root 2 over root 2 times root 2 is 2. So I might see this as 9 root 2 over 2. We can also write that as 9 divided by 2 is 4.5. They can have a decimal with a root. There's no reason not to. Um, or they might write it as 9 halves and then put the root next to it. These are all the same. So you really just have to be flexible with your answers if it's multiple choice. I'm okay with either one if it's not. All right, example number five. We have two values and they're just labeled. And so we're given our hypotenuse. And so we want to do our hypotenuse and divide it by root two. So we get 28 root 6, and we're going to divide that by root 2. Now, as a review, the way roots work is, remember, we can do them together. So the 28 is going to stay, and then I can actually divide these like they're both inside. And so 6 divided by 2 is root 3. Okay, and so that's what our sides would be. So 28 root 3 and 28 root 3. All right, let's do one that doesn't have a picture, but it says in a square, so I'm going to go ahead and label a square. We know all sides are equal, and they all have right angles. It says the diagonal has a length of 30 root 2, so I'm going to draw that diagonal. I'm just going to draw 1, and I'm going to label that as 30 root 2. This says find the perimeter of the square. So we want to find all four sides. So right now, though, I'm just going to think of this as one bottom right triangle, which if these two sides are the same, that means that these are 45, 45, okay? So we are given the hypotenuse. And to find a leg, we divide by root 2. Well, that's kind of nice because then those cancel. Oops, then those cancel. So that means our side is 30, ah, so 30. And that means that all four sides are 30. So our perimeter equals four times 30, which is 120. Okay, and so that's where we can use this information. Now, the second special triangle is a little harder because we've got three different angles. So this is gonna be the 30, 60, 90, triangle and you'll notice there's going to be three different ratios so i kind of think of oh two different angles has two different sides and rules three different angles had three different sides and rules now everything though is based on having the smallest angle value so if you memorize these that means you need to find this one first okay so that's kind of a key on the other triangle, it didn't matter which one we had because there were just two options. So 
the side that's across from the 30 is always going to be the smallest, and that's known as x. The 60 side is always going to be whatever that side is times root 3. And then our hypotenuse is always going to be double whatever the side across from the 30 is. Okay, so it is a little bit trickier, but everything is based on knowing the smallest side. And so if you, we have to go backwards, I'm going to say um, smallest is x. So we'll say across from the 30. Um, if you want the 60 degree side, you're going to do x times root 3. And if you want to do the hypotenuse, you're going to do x times 2. So that means if you have these sides to go backwards, you divide. All right, so it's kind of the same idea as the first triangle. So let's go ahead, and I know I can't have both of these, but that's okay. I'm going to draw it up here. So here's 30, 60, so x, x root 3, and 2x. All right, so everything's based on knowing the 30 side. So I see what we have, and we have that, okay? So I know this is x, this is x root 3, and this is 2x. I go ahead and label these, so then it kind of helps me. So I see that x is 3. Does that make sense? So then everywhere I see an x, I can put in a 3. So that means that this side is going to be 3 times root 3 across from the 60. And my hypotenuse is going to be 2 times 3, which is 6. Okay, so this is going to be the easiest scenario. When you have the side across from the 30, multiply by root 3, multiply by 2. That's going to be as easy as it gets. Even if I add other numbers, it doesn't matter what it is. The rule is going to be the easiest to remember. So like, let's look at example 8. I have the side that's across from the 30, so that's great. So to find the other side that's across from the 60, remember we take that x root 3. So I'd have 2 root 3, and I would still multiply by another root 3. It's just a coincidence that that was 2 root 3. The rule doesn't change. This is still x root 3. So we clean this up. Root 3 times root 3 is 3 times 2 gives me 6. So that means this side is 6. The hypotenuse is double whatever this is. Remember, this is x. So if I do 2 root 3 and I take that times 2, you can only multiply the outside numbers. So 2 times 2 is 4, and the root 3 stays. Okay, so we're doing roots. We're getting the ratio rules. Not super easy. All right, let's look at example number three. Sorry, nine. So across from the 30, I say x, x root 3, and 2x. I like to write them because some things might help you stand out. So what I notice, I don't have the side across from the 30. We definitely want that. But things kind of match up. So this is telling me, oh, x is 13. Does that make sense? So I know this side is 13 because that's in the x spot. And I was given the side across from the 60 that lined up. So then that means if x is 13, that's 2 times 13. So I know this side is 26. OK? But you always want to, before you find the hypotenuse, you need to find the side that's across from the 30, even if that's not given first. Okay? All right, let's look at example 10. On this one, I'm given the hypotenuse. So I know that's 2x across from the 30 is x, and this is x root 3. So I'm going to draw the same thing down here. I think I'm just going to put my answers down here to make it a little bit easier to see. I don't know if it's confusing for you, but. So I know this is 4. Okay. So I know, because that's in that spot, and that's 2 times some number. So I'm trying to find out what that number is. So you can make an equation if you want, or you can just think about it. So divide by 2, and I know x equals 2. And so that means that everywhere I see an x, I can now put in a 2. So this side is 2, and this side now is 2 root 3.
okay? So that ratio still applies. We just might have to use it in a different way. All right, let's look at example 11. Across from the 30x, across from the 60x root 3, and the hypotenuse is 2 times x. So this one's a little trickier. So I know, we can think of this as an equation, 2x equals 30 root 3. And so I want to solve for x. So we'll divide by 2, divide by 2. And so x equals 15 root 3. Okay. So I know this side. And then this side is x root 3. So x is 15 root 3. And I need to multiply that by another root 3. So root 3 times root 3 is 3, times 15 gives me 45. Okay, so rules don't change. Set up equations if it helps, whatever you need. All right, let's look at example 12. I do have the side across from 30, so I know it's x, x root 3, and 2x. So that means that x is 17 root 2. Okay? So I'm going to double that to find the hypotenuse. So remember, if we double, we just double the number outside. So 2 times 17 root 2 gives me 34 root 2. So this is 34 root 2. This side is x times root 3. Well, roots get multiplied back together. So uh, 2 times 3 is 6. So this side would be 17 root 6. All right, the last one, equilateral triangle. Remember, equilateral means that all sides are the same, which also means that all angles are 60. Okay? I know it's been a while. Um, it says the sides are 10. And it says, what's the length of the altitude? So we did learn altitude. Altitude is the straight height. And because it's an equilateral triangle, it's going to cut into a right triangle and it's going to cut these into half. So if I just look at the one side, I'm going to draw that nicer. So I know this is a right angle. That one's 60 and it cut that angle in half. So this is 30 and we know this is 10 and this side was five. And it says, what is the altitude? So this is another 30, 60 triangle. Now, I put an X here. Let's go ahead and um, I'll just put a question mark instead of an X so we don't get confused. Okay. So let's use purple. So I know across from the 30 is X, across from the 60 is X root three, and this is two times x. Well, that should make sense. If x is five, two times five is 10, that is true. So this side of x is five would be five root three. That's the altitude. All right, and so that's where we can kind of apply this knowledge. There's lots of other uses as well. That's just one of them. So go ahead and give your homework a try and the quiz and email me if you have any questions, all right? I'd love to help you.